is Bonnie from Backward Story, and today we are going to enjoy a selection of wonderful girl power graphic novels from First Second Books. I'm so pleased to be on tour with First Second, an imprint of Macmillan and Fierce Reads, and we have The City on the Other Side, we have Scarlet Heart Monster Hunter, we have the first two books in the Cucumber Quest series, we have the second book in the Star Scouts and the League of Lasers, and then we have all three books in Claudette's Adventures. And we are going to take a look at each of these individually. The first series I want to talk about is Cucumber Quest by GGDG. And it is about a brother and a sister. Their names are Cucumber and Almond. The first book in the series is The Donut Kingdom. And the second book is The Ripple Kingdom. And what's really cool is that there are seven kingdoms. And they have to go on a quest through each of the seven. And in every kingdom, the characters are named very specifically. So the citizens of Donut Kingdom all have food names uh, such as cucumber and almond and in the ripple kingdom for example you have princess nautilus and her father is king kelp and so whenever you encounter people throughout the world no matter what kingdom they came from you can kind of tell based on their name and the meaning of their name where they might have come from and i think that is really cool and a really fun characteristic of the series it's very defining and you have all of these little fun additions, such as game charts for kids who maybe are into video games. They tell you the strengths, the weaknesses, the type of weapons that they're good with, a little bit about both the heroes and the villains. The art is very fun. It has like almost an anime-esque quality to it. It's just bright and fun, and it's just a really interesting series. It starts off with Cucumber's father telling him that he has to go off on this heroic quest to save the kingdom from the Nightmare Knight who is being resurrected. And Cucumber's like, wait, I don't want to do this. I'm no hero. I want to go to school. I'm a scholar. I'm studying magic. And hey, don't you know, Almond is studying to be a knight. She knows all about swords and stuff. And they're just like... Pfft. Her little sister, yeah, that's not happening. And Almond actually winds up tagging along with him anyway. And the two of them make a really great team. And it's just a really great sibling story with a lot of action and adventure. And in the first two books, you only get one of the seven items needed to complete the quest. So the series is going to go on for a while. And it's just a really fun series for all ages. Next up, we have The City on the Other Side. I'm going to butcher this name, but it's by Margaret Scott and Robin Robinson. And it is actually historical, believe it or not. It takes place in 1906 after the Great Quake of San Francisco. It still happened very recently, and in fact, there are two realms, and you have the Seelies and you have the Unseelies. And for half a year, one of them is in power and the other one is not. And they are at war with one another. And so their war actually created this earthquake that devastated San Francisco, and it went into Oregon. And because of that, the world is unstable. And this is actually a standalone, and it's about a girl named Isabel whose parents want her to be very proper and to always be clean and not to get dirty. And she goes to live with her dad for a while, and she winds up getting mixed up into this other world, and she finds a locket and has to use it to help the Seelies overcome the Unseelies and bring balance back to the world again. So it's a really fun adventure. It's historical. The art is really nice in it. I really loved looking at it. This is one that is good for all ages. It doesn't have anything violent. It doesn't have older themes in it that are too mature for younger readers. It will still appeal to older readers as well because... The art is a little more mature, and the colors are a little cooler in tone and not quite as vibrant as, say, Cucumber Quest, but it's still really interesting. And because it's got that sealy, unsealy, like, fairy-esque world to it, that's going to appeal to a lot of readers as well, because fairies are always interesting, and their world is always one that 
wants to be explored, especially right now while they're gaining in popularity. Next, I'm going to feature the other historical graphic novel in the line, Scarlet Heart Monster Hunter. It's by Marcus Sedwick and Thomas Taylor. This takes place during the Victorian era. Like, I imagine it taking place in the 1920s, 1930s. You have the cars of that time period. You have airplanes that are reminiscent of Amelia Earhart. Scarlet says things such as leaping lizards, which brings little orphan Annie to mind from the musical and the comic strip Annie. This is a darker series, so it's definitely one for older kids who are not scared so easily. It's got demons, it's got mummies, it's got people who want to eat brains in it. You can see right here, it's a little bit darker and scarier, so if kids get scared easily, this might not be something for them. But you can tell just based on the cover, it says Monster Hunter, and you do see some monsters in the background so it's definitely one for upper elementary into middle school depending on the age range and the type of content level that the kids can handle this one's a little more buffy-esque it's about a girl who is a monster hunter her parents were monster hunters they died hunting monsters and they find out that somebody is bringing monsters to life just to kill them and get the reward, and they want to stop that from happening. So this is the first book in a series, and it is one that is definitely action-packed, and it is definitely going to appeal to a lot of readers. It is full of monsters and full of mayhem, and it's really interesting that they framed it into the Victorian time period, and it's a story that's not quite like what I've heard before, but it's not quite unlike it either. You've got ghost hunting in here. You've got a little bit of mix of everything, so it's a little bit more paranormal than the other graphic novels, and that definitely appeals to a lot of people. Next up, we have The Star Scouts, which is by Mike Lawrence, and I did not realize that this was the second book in the series when I started reading it. I have not read the first book yet. This is The League of Lasers. This is a sci-fi graphic novel, so if you like space type stories if you like things like guardians of the galaxy if you like working with citizens of all different planets where everyone is an alien this is a lot of fun the main character is a human girl named Avani Patel, and she gets an invitation to audition to be in the prestigious star scouts and for their quest they go off in ships to other planets and she is with Pam, who is from another planet that breathes methane instead of oxygen, and the two of them don't really get along, but something goes wrong and they wind up on a hostile planet that's never seen aliens before, and the two of them have to work together if they want to save themselves and get off this planet and return home, return to their training, and succeed in their mission. So it's just a lot of fun. Again, it's not too violent. It's not too scary. Kids of all ages can read this. And it's really fun because it talks about what is it to be a hero? What is it to go off on adventures? And it's super easy to relate to. There's this passage I especially love, even though it's not space related, where Avani is talking about all of the things she's seen, the places she's been, and she misses places like the farm when she moved to a city, she felt small. And then when she went to space, she felt even smaller. So sometimes it's nice to come back to places that make you feel big again. And a lot of kids have that experience. A lot of teens, once you leave home, sometimes you just outgrow your life there and you change and you evolve as a person and things just aren't the same when you come home again. Um, that really struck a chord with me. That's definitely happened to me. So I think that that has happened to a lot of people and a lot of people can relate to that. And you can go off on all of these incredible adventures and you can have family waiting there and supporting you even after the fact, but you always have your roots. And even though you've come so far and changed so much, it still really defines you. And I think that that's probably going to be a very important part of this series as Avani goes on her adventures once she becomes one of the Star Scouts. 
And this last series is a completed trilogy. It's really fun. It's by Rafael Rosado and Jorge Aguirre. And it is Giants Beware, Dragons Beware, and Monsters Beware. And it stars a girl named Claudette, her brother Gaston, and her friend Marie. And it takes place in France. At least I'm assuming it does based on names like Gaston and the fact that French is thrown in every once in a while. And it's a lot of fun. And Claudette is a girl who is obsessed with going on adventures and bringing fame and glory home. Her father was a knight and he lost one of his arms and both of his legs when battling a fierce dragon back in the day. And now Claudette wants to be just like him. In the first book, Claudette hears that there is a giant who likes to eat baby toes and a fortress wall was created that protects the citizens from magic and anyone who wishes to do them harm so that they are now safe from giants and anybody else out there. And Claudette is like, well, but you didn't kill the giant that eats baby toes. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do that. And she drags her two friends into the mix and Marie wants nothing more than to be a princess in life. She goes to etiquette school and has all of the training for it. And her brother Gaston, he just wants to bake things. He's a really good baker. And neither one of them has the sense of adventure that Claudette does. But they come along and get into all kinds of trouble. But they also help one another. And through teamwork, they are able to do things that they couldn't have done on their own. And that continues throughout the series. So in Dragons Beware, they decide that they're going to go face the dragon that took the arm and the legs of their father. And then there is a wizard that wants to come and attack everyone, and they decide that they're going to stop him too. And in Monsters Beware, there is a coliseum and warrior games and Claudette really wants to fight and they find out that the sea hag who killed her mother has come to fight in the games as well and there might be more to it than that because they want to have revenge and nobody believes them about that so it's a really fun series it's definitely very clean it's not violent at all Nobody ever really dies. You can live in somebody's belly for years and years and years and still come out unscathed and alive in the end. And you have talking swords. And it's fun for all ages. And it just isn't scary at all. It sounds like it might be. But it's done in such a fun way. And it's really nice to have a heroine who doesn't care about makeup and doing up her hair and wearing fancy dresses and she's allowed to be who she is and she's allowed to be best friends with somebody who does like all of those things and they make a great pair and it's great that the brother also is allowed to be who he is he's allowed to bake and to love baking and to not be the warrior and to have his sister be the warrior and it's a great flip on gender and it's just so much fun and it's definitely a series that is great for kids of all ages. All of these different books and series are just so much fun and I really do want to thank First Second for having me on tour because these books were all so interesting in very different ways and some of them I definitely never would have picked up. I definitely think that Cucumber Quest might be my favorite of everything when going into it. I thought that it was going to be City on the Other Side which I still did really enjoy a lot and some of them are more to my taste than others personally just because some genres... I don't like as much, but I can see why they will appeal to so many kids and teens and even adults. And they are so great for people of all ages. And they all feature girls who love adventure and love kicking butt. And we need more girls. We need more girl power. We need more fierce females in both books and in life because when they're in books, our girls know that this is something that they can do. This is something that they can try to be. And it's not just guys having all of the adventures. So things that have girls as main characters and have them having the adventures are so important. And I love the fact that First Second is doing so much to bring so many of them to light. So that is everything for me today. I would love to know which books sound the best to you, which ones you think you might read, 
which ones that I haven't mentioned that are all about girl power that you love, definitely let me know and I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye!